Hello again, squadron. The first naval aerospace squadron. Hello, this is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with this month's State of the Unit address. Alright, we're going to do this just a little bit differently this month. Um, There's a few things going on in the squadron I want to make everybody aware of, and so maybe we can have a great month of October and in our way into November and December and then get this show on the road. 3.0 has hit Evil Cadi. If you don't know what that is, uh, first of all, if this is the if you don't know what our state of the unit address is, it's our monthly newsletter that I produce to put out to the squadron so that you can know what's going on in the squadron. If you don't follow or you you know you haven't been around quite a bit or whatever, you might not know what Evil Cadi is, but they basically they are the first wave of the PTU. And the PTU is the Public Test Universe, which is basically a second build of Star Citizen. You've got the primary live build that you play and in the PTU there is a select group of people that get to play in the PTU to help CIG test it. And Evil Cadi are the first wave, the first thousand players or so. They have to sign a non-disclosure act agreement so that they do not leak out any videos or any um, gameplay actions or no bugs or nothing. They can't leak anything out. Sometimes it happens, accidents happen, things like that. <coughs> I'm sure they'll be removed from Evil Cadi if they do. But what I'm trying to say is we've all been waiting for 3.0 since last August. I've been waiting for 3.0 since last CitizenCon. Okay, so, or yeah, Gamescom. Gamescom? Probably last Gamescom. Okay, which is when they showed off the worm, right? That was Gamescom? I think it was Gamescom. So, I, I could be getting my dates wrong. But, CitizenCon comes out the 27th of this month. I fully anticipate Evil Cadi having the uh, 3.0 build in their possession. They, ha they currently do have it in their possession. They're testing their work and they're playing... In a week or two, you're going to see a larger percentage of the PTU testers getting their hands on 3.0. And once that happens, you're going to see a lot of videos coming out saying, Hey, check this out, 3.0. This is what I'm playing 3.0. And this is what you can do in 3.0. Check it out, check it out, check it out. You're going to see a ton, a ton of videos from this joker about 3.0. When 3.0 goes live, I expect... To see you in the game. I expect you to see. I want you to download it. I want you to play it. Um, okay. We have, a, we have an okay size squadron. We really do. Tw you know, like 25 people, right? Half of them never log in. And I, and I get that because 3.0 is not up. I understand that. Or... They've lost interest. They became a squadron member. Nah, they've lost interest or whatever. And that can happen when nothing new's happening in the squadron so, or in the game. So I understand that. Plus, it's still alpha. It's not. Some people actually have told me that they bought into the game and they're just waiting for the game to come out live. And when it does, they'll jump in and they'll play. So that tells me they're kind of a casual player. They're not really, you know. So I'm not going to worry about them because they're just casual you know, but us hardcore gamers, you and me, the ones that are watching this video because you're hardcore and you want this squadron to succeed, we need to get into the game, especially when 3.0 pops out. When it does, we need to get into that game. We need to play as a team. We need to recruit. We need to uh, do everything in our power to make our squadron better, right? We need to come up, we need to learn what this whole cargo uh, system's all about. We need to look, so I can put it in our boot camp. We need to learn what all this uh, pirating's about. You know, what is the, the car, you know, the what is the, uh, the ground situation going to be like? You know, we need to learn all the new things. 
Okay. So I expect everybody to log in. Are you going to log in? Maybe, maybe not. You know, because some of you got you can't or you log in at a different time of day or whatever, and that's fine. I don't mind. I just hope to see a lot of you in. I just hope to see Discord slam packed full of squadron members doing their thing. Okay? And uh, once that happens, great. Now let's talk about Discord since I just brought that up. You know Discord's going to be going away. I'm going to be getting rid of it. I'm going to be pushing the button and saying, boop, gone. When? Not today. Okay? <laughs> Not today. When voice over IP becomes a thing and it becomes reliable and the spectrum inter integration in our system where we can do face over IP and we can do the uh, render to texture and all that. When we can do all that in the game, which might be a year from now, who knows when, when that happens and it becomes reliable, Discord will probably still be there, but it won't be used it, it will never be used. It's just there for a whatever, right? Because we're going to do everything in the game. When the website becomes more powerful, we're going to put a lot more things into the website. I'm talking about the RSI website. When that switches over to the new thing and uh, finally Organizations 2.0 comes out or 3.0, we're going ahead and we'll put more stuff into that and we'll get rid of our engine site. The engine site's really just a splash page pointing us to the RSI site. Okay, having said that, we have some people in Discord. We have a bunch of people in Discord, and that's fine. I mean, for other games like War Thunder or whatever, but I'm never going to be in there. And I don't know if you guys are ever going to be in. I don't, you know, <laughs> what am I trying to say? I feel like, and, and this is this is probably me just being emotional. I feel like we're being, I feel like we're being not abused, but taken advantage of. Because there's a lot of people using our Discord that are not in our squadron. And if they were to log in to play with our squadron, I would be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, cool. But they're not. They're logging in and just lingering in our squadron, which leads me to believe they're not to be trusted. If they don't participate with us or do anything with us, all they do is read our communications, I don't think that they can be trusted. So, it, you might have noticed, Discord just changed. It just added a bunch of permissions, allowed you to make groups of rooms and rooms and assign different types of permissions and blah 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 right that just changed i just changed our discord to accommodate our guests they have some rooms that they can use and then our squadron has all these other rooms that we're going to be using uh, and our only our squadron has permission to access those rooms so that alleviates that problem. So they can stay on our Discord. They can play War Thunder all they want. If they want to play with us, they're going to have to ping us and get us to go into one of the guest rooms and join with them because they're not going to have access to any of our private chats. Not going to happen. Okay? So that's, that's step one. Step two. When 3.0 comes out, we have to recruit. We have to recruit. I want to see some recruitment. I want to see some interest. How many times, how many times, let me back up. How many people have you gotten into our squadron directly? How many people have you talked to in the game and they eventually joined our squadron? If the number is zero, shame on you. If the number is over five, I'm happy. Okay, but if it's one to five, you need to start recruiting. You need to get out there, get the word out, let people know. Okay, now this is this is a little sneak peek into a video I'm getting ready to do. 
But there was a there was a genius move by a streamer called WTF Osaris. Okay, WTF Osaris. He's a pirate. He's creating a pirate organization. Fine. I want there to be pirate organizations because that makes our job more enjoyable because now we'll have competitors, right? We'll be we'll keep our job security be, because people will want to hire us because they'll because WTF and his organization is going to attack people. Okay, fine. I watched a stream one night. It was like 4 a.m. in the morning. He was streaming at 4 a.m. I thought that was my time slot. But okay, he was he was streaming, and I said, you know what? I'm not tired. I'm not going to bed. Let me watch somebody else's stream. And I saw WTF was on there, and I like watching his podcast and stuff. So I said, you know what? I'm going to watch him. So I watched him. He didn't do anything interesting. He wasn't the greatest player. He ran around, got shot more than he shot somebody, and that's fine. That's like me. He, you know, he looked like he played about as good as I did. You know, and 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 his not his knowledge of the game is on par with me, and so so I was like, oh, I was enjoying it. Then he had this he had this giveaway, right? He was giving away a cutlass. First of all, that's like a hundred bucks, right? I'm just, I don't know the exact price, but let's just say it's a hundred bucks. He's giving away a cutlass for a hundred dollars. He probably bought, and he I think he mentioned he bought hundreds of ships in the concept sales because they're a lot cheaper, right? And then when their value goes up, then he gives them away. And it seems like he's giving away a lot more valuable ship, right? Which is true, but and because that cutlass was reworked and it's a lot bigger. But back to my point. He has a cutlass, and he's giving it away. And in the chat, you just have to type, you know, like, I raffle, or uh, exclamation mark raffle, or something like that, right? To, ra to raffle it off. But he said there's a requirement. He's going to, but the raffle checks his RSI organization website. He probably does it manually. But he checks the RSI website. And if you're not a member of his organization, you're not eligible. Isn't that genius? Okay, so now. I'm talking to you guys. I don't know if I'm going to make this video public. I don't think I will. But I am going to create a public video talking about the subject. I personally think that's unscrupulous. Um, you're you're buying someone. They're 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 buying into your organization so that they have a chance to win a cutlass. He's going to get people to join his organization only because they wanted a chance to win that cutlass. That is, I think it's genius because he, he already has like a thousand people in his organization because of that giveaway. But isn't that kind of underhanded or whatever? First of all, you, the person getting in the raffle, once you get the cutlass, you can leave his organization. Some people will join his organization and not win. And maybe they'll stay with him. Maybe they won't stay with him. But it's really kind of sneaky and underhanded way to get people to join. But they don't have to stay. They could leave. But now here's my other point. If you are an organization leader, WTF a source, and you get people to join your organization because they want the raffle, is that the kind of people that you want to stay around and work in your organization? I think he does. I think that's the kind of people he wants in his in his uh, pirate organization. That's not the kind of people I want. I don't want people that only join our organization because they think we're going to pay them something. A ship. A $100 ship. I don't want that. I want you to join our organization because you believe in what we stand for and our mission and you're excited about helping us out. You want to be part of something great. You don't want to be a pirate. All right, that's just me. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out and checking out this video. I kept it short this month. I'll see you in the hangar real soon. 3.0.